My name is T. Patrick Murray, and I'm an award-winning filmmaker. I made a documentary called The Last Game, which was called, quote, possibly the best sports film ever made by the Los Angeles Times, four out of four stars from USA Today, the best documentary I ever saw from Anna Cool News, and the most exciting movie I've ever seen by my local paper, the Philadelphia Inquirer. I say none of this to, to brag, but to establish credibility. I grew up with M. Night Shyamalan, we went to the same high school. He's had a little bit more success than me than, you know, but that's cool. We're artists and, uh, you know, Van Gogh never sold a painting, so who knows, time will tell. Points this, I am making a film that is uh, very interesting. It's called um, Chasing J.P. Morgan. And uh, what is it about? Well, it's about fraud closure, as they call it, foreclosure that is not legal. It's about uh, the economic situation and the legal situation and the social situation involving J.P. Morgan Chase, who is the person that's foreclosing on me for the third time after I've beaten them in court. Um, actually, I beat them in the lawsuit. They dismissed it right before any trial because I had the evidence that they were not, in fact, the holders in due course. In other words, they had no right to sue or foreclose on me. Why did they have no right to foreclose on me? What does all this mean? How can this help you? Even if you pay your mortgage and you have no problems with your mortgage, if I told you that it was illegal things that they were doing, the interest they were charging you, for example, that your 6% rate is really 580% the first year, that's 107 the fifth year, it doesn't get to 6% until the 30th year, if I told you that and explained that to you and showed it to you and showed you how all that's fraudulent and illegal, if it's premeditated and known, and if I told you that you could probably get your house for free or get trouble damages or get some relief because this isn't being opportunistic or un-American, this is actually redressing a wrong. Um, just like the LIBOR scandal indicates, which is a manipulation of the base interest rate, the London Interbank uh, exchange rate, uh, which is, you know, the hallmark, which is like the prime rate of the world. The point is, is that if that's manipulated, then the idea of the manipulation of amortization tables, which dictates the dynamic relationship between equity or ownership or principal that's repaid in a loan payment, a fixed loan payment, and the amount that is for interest. And the way that that's set up is taken for granted and thought of as being normal, when in fact it's called front-loading, and it's a way of monetizing the debt quicker, and it's also that the foundation of the entire scandal known as the derivative scandal, which almost imploded our economy in 2008, which involved the bundling of all of these, um, not mortgages actually, notes, which are the debts, to buy the homes, and bundled them together and sold them as trusts, or basically CBOMBS trusts. They became just another type of thing, like a bond, a stock, well this was a derivative type of instrument. People made trillions of dollars, it was great. Um, in fact, there was only one problem with the whole idea. Well, if something happened that had never happened in history, they'd be fucked, and, and, and the things would be underwater, and they'd be out of the money. What's that thing? Um, it's if real estate ever went down. And in 2008, as you may remember, real estate went down and it continues to go down. So as a result, um, we almost, you know, collapses an economy in 2008, but, you know, AIG bailed uh, you know, out the, um, the, the, the certificate holders and et cetera, et cetera. We've had QE1, QE2, you know, we're just printing money. We're in a fiat Ponzi economy. This whole thing will collapse and be replaced by a new system. That's not really the focus, though. What the focus is, is my experience fighting a foreclosure with uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, number one. Number two, my countersuit for fraud, for RICO, uh, the Third Circuit federal class action suit I'm going to put in that's going to seek billions of damages for anyone that's ever had a mortgage ever from any of the major banks. This isn't just Chase. Uh, that is uh, uh, going to be for like the big six banks, and it's basically going to, if you had, if you had any mortgage at all, you should be part of this. And why? Well, watch the movie when it comes out, or check out my website. All right. So here, what's the point of all this bullshit? Okay, is that I wasn't able to get the chain, the whole nine yards. Ready? Wait. Let's get this relief ordered. That should be honestly. That should be the name of the movie. Relief ordered. Wouldn't it be nice to order relief anytime you needed it? And ready? Here's the here's the here's the money shot of the movie. Now, if you look closely, it says ten fifty three. Ten fifty three. So seven minutes. Seven minutes. Lucky seven. Lucky seven. Anyway, um, yeah, they needed exact change. They wouldn't. I didn't have it. 
I didn't have my ID, they wouldn't let me out. It was a nightmare. I'm not lawyering. And that's that. We did it, people. In the house. Chasing JP Morgan, man. I have not yet begun to fight. It is approximately an hour from the sheriff's sale in my home. And I am racing down to the city of Philadelphia. First stopping at a friend's home who is printing out the bankruptcy filing documents. Since my printer, of course, the moment I needed it most, ran out of ink. So thank God I have one friend in the world, actually my girlfriend, since of course I'm getting divorced over this whole incident, basically. So no big deal there. It's great to have a girlfriend. It's great to, you know, God taketh away, God giveth. Oh shit. Um, anyway, I'm just kind of, you know, not really a lot of natural drama to a story about banking fraud, you know, foreclosure. I mean, pretty much that and like insurance, pretty much like the least sexy thing you can ever make a fucking movie about. But I figure, uh, you know, this is like a high speed chase essentially and I had a Porsche, which is, you know, James Bondy in, in a way. No one's really chasing me, nor is my life in danger, but I think I can simulate that with my lights being on and me driving at excessive speeds. Uh, I don't even have the radio on, I'm so serious and focused. Um, I may have to attract the attention of law enforcement and or someone who is in the employ of Chase to prevent me from a timely filing and a cheating supersede us or rather an automatic stay uh, pending a uh, adjudication of both the appeal and the bankruptcy proceedings. I want to know for the record that this whole time I was going to do a chapter 13 with me and Tanuja. And for a lot of reasons that made a lot of sense. And last minute, for reasons I'll go into later, I had the fucking stunning stroke of luck to have this stunning insight of what? Of the fact that I needed to, as an individual, file not under chapter 13, but under chapter 7 for reasons I'll state later. But that was a huge realization. It's an example of how one small decision, I mean it's a large decision, but it doesn't take a lot to do, you can just choose one. And there's reasons to do both. Most people do chapter 13 actually for closure. But there's a reason to do chapter seven, I'll go into it later, I'll cut to it right now for the reasons. Back. Now you understand why I had to change your heart, and it was hours before I had to change all my things from chapter 13 to chapter seven and take her off of this for dinner. And I'll explain why. But then this is going to be a very, 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 very interesting development because by virtue of just the, the manner in which I filed my bankruptcy, I have created leverage that I would not have had by shifting the burden of proof, which already rests with Chase and as the plaintiff. It even makes it further uh, by intensifying it through means of automatic production of evidentiary support for the contention of standing uh, as a creditor. So it's as if they're saying, okay, if you're a creditor, fine. You just need to do one thing. You have to prove it. And so in listing them as an unsecured creditor by averring, as it's true, that they no longer own it, they sold it to Sasco for excess, uh, Sasco rather, for XS from Lehman Brothers, or uh, Wilmington Jew Trust, whatever. Rehypothecated, resold fucking 80 times, who knows? De defaulted, uh, insured, and paid out. The point is this, who cares? It's not about that. It's about I got an hour to get down to the city, get upstairs, fill out these forms. I filled out maybe half of them, maybe three quarters. On, but then I just, when I realized I couldn't e file them, I thought I could e file them. It turns out I can't e file them. And now I'm rushing down like a fucking asshole with one hour left to do this. Because why? Because I do everything alone, and while I'm good at a lot of it, I fucking can't even comprehend the whole time that despite being a, p a pacer, uh, you know, user, which is the court system, e you know, e, e filing system, basically system, you have to have like a special permission to do fucking e filing. You have to be a lawyer. It's not clear. I fucking waste my whole night. The point is, now I realized it at the last minute, and I'm going to save the day. And again, injecting a little bit. Maybe I'll do some cutaways or some real card chases right now. Uh, maybe I'll throw in some people shooting at me or something, but uh, the fact is uh, time is, is really the enemy. So maybe I'll just have to edit this uh, to denote the fact that I'm running out of time. This is not the right time. Let's go with the right time. Here. It's not. It's got to be nine. It's got to be. That's got to be the right time. Wait. It's got to be the right time. I bet it is. 
All right, so here's the uh, here's the here's the situation, people. I am now on the first of no, sorry, January sixteenth, two thousand fourteen, eleven seventeen p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm walking on Eighth Street, leaving Market, leaving the Federal Building at nine hundred Market Street. Why? Because I just filed by myself without my wife or my ex or whatever you want to call her with the mother of my children my co-debtor my co-owner in my home anyway good girl point is but by myself i filed a chapter seven instead of a chapter 13. and i had to do it by 11 o'clock in order to get the automatic stay because i didn't have my license with me okay they wouldn't let me in the federal building had to get a supervisor involved and basically cry to let him go, let me go up. Once I got up there, I had literally minutes left. Until Shot of the, uh, of the um, basically the uh, Grand Canyon part of the film. And at the end of the day, uh, to see these beautiful place is very awesome. But it's also put in perspective the ridiculousness of the legal process, the fraud of foreclosure. But it's cosmic and significant compared to something like this. So I guess I just want to say I've had a great time, and this behind me should be something that everyone takes to heart as, uh, I don't know, proof that no matter what happens in our daily lives, no matter even if we lose our quote-unquote home, um, there's always a place for us somewhere else. Home is wherever the loved ones are. Thank you very much.